Hey everybody, Paul Valencourt here. This is the 30 Pitches in 30 Days project. This is day two, pitch two. It's called the Leader of the Pack, and it goes a little something like this. We open on a high school football practice on a high school football field, and we see that that team is sort of like the centerpiece of this high school. We see the team and the coach, and then the surrounding, the next sort of bringing people out, and then the next bringing people out, but it's sort of, this is the centerpiece of this high school experience, is this football team. Um, over on the bleachers, though, there's one kid who seems like he should be part of the team. He's big, athletic, he sort of seems like he's a, a go-getter, but he's just watching the practice. He's clearly on the outside of this equation. We come to find out that this is Mike. He is our, our main character. He's coming into his senior year, but him and his father just moved here over the summer. His mother passed away and his dad was troubled for a while. And now he's got a new job in this town and him and Mike have moved here. And, and Mike was a big shot football player on his last, at his last high school, but now he's kind of starting over again. Um, and then, um, and so Mike's watching this, this football practice clearly on the outside. While he's doing that, though, one person takes interest in him, a young woman named Meredith, who is the school's star reporter on their, on their, um, their uh, school newspaper. And we come to find out that she's not only sort of like a star reporter, but she's lived here her whole life, and she knows everybody. It's not that big of a town. And she knows everybody, so she's like a, the star reporter, yes, but she's also a little bit of a historian of this town. She knows everything, all the ins and outs. And she goes on to tell Mike that, the team has really sort of brought this high school together. They were sort of a lackluster team, but then they got this new coach a few years ago, and everything's really kind of come together. This team is on a big winning streak, and they're looking at states this this year, and uh, and everyone's super excited about the team. Mike says that he really wants to be part of this team, and she says, that's a good idea. You can't just sit over here on the bleachers and, and watch life go by. You have to find your group. You have to find your team that you're, that you're a part of, because uh, you can't go through high school alone. Mike agrees. We see Mike's home life. It is trouble. Him and his father um, don't really get along. The only thing they agree on is football. And at his last high school, football was Mike's entire life. And he's hoping to, to start over here. And he does. He tries out for the football team, and he does great. He's one of the top performers at the at the tryouts, and even gets on the team. But when it comes down to practice, he's really relegated to the sidelines. He 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 was a star in his last team, but now he's just like a sideline player riding the bench, practice after practice, and then even as the games start, and he just just doesn't know how to how to break through. That the, the core team is so tightly knit. The core guys that really make up the heart of the team are so tightly knit that he, he can't break through. He tries, but it's unsuccessful. Meanwhile, his friendship with Meredith is, is, is evolving, and she tells him her theory. She thinks it has to do something with the coach, and she's not totally, um, don't, she doesn't think it's totally on the up and up. She thinks there's something going on with the coach. They're winning, and so no one's asking questions because everyone likes a winning football team, but she thinks that something's going on. And Mike thinks, yeah, maybe that's true. And then so he goes, he follows the team around. He sort of, him and Meredith go to investigate. He, Meredith gives him the impetus and he gives her the courage and they go to investigate. The team sometimes has these late night practices or late night meetings and, and all the parents, again, are on board. Their sons are happy. The team is winning. So kind of they're, they're given a, a wide berth in this town. But they have these late night practices and Mike and, Mer Mike and Meredith go and check it out. And they find out that the reason that this team is winning the whole time is that the coach is a werewolf, and he has turned this core group of guys into werewolves as well. This is his little pack that he's in charge of, and he's sort of bringing these guys up and sort of making them strong, and they are, are in turn making the team strong. Mike and Meredith cannot believe what's going on, but surprisingly, they're not super freaked out. I mean, it's a crazy thing to see, but they're not super freaked out. Meredith is, is thrilled that she's vindicated in her suspicion of the coach and this team and she's like oh my gosh I can't believe it. I was right there is a secret and Mike he's like oh now I know what I need to do I need to get I need to be one of these guys and they're both sort of on this on this quest to 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 figure out how and they know they can't tell anyone because no one will ever believe them right so Mike eventually goes and uh talks to the coach <clears throat> he has a turning point moment where he goes and talks to the coach and just tells him look I know what the thing is I know what you're doing. These are werewolves. I want to be one too, so and so. The coach is shocked. No one has ever confronted him about this before. He's had to sort of reach out to these players and sort of, you know, recruit them. 
but now Mike's coming to him and he is totally freaked out. Also, Mike is an unknown quantity. He's a new guy in this school, a new guy in this town. The coach doesn't know if he can be trusted. So the coach tries to, um, although he's not 100%, tries to stonewall Mike and let him know, hey, look, I don't know what you're talking about and this is not, um, this is not going to happen. You just are, you're on the team, you know, you're part of a winning organization. Just do that. Just put in the hard work. And uh, he tries to make it like a regular football sort of hard work story. Um, so Mike is uh, disappointed because he thought, oh, this is the, this is the end. And he goes back to Meredith and they talk some more. And, and she sort of lets him know that there was another uh, t team in a, in a t town not too far away that had a similar uh, sort of um, uh, arc where they were a losing team and then they became a winning team and then they had a sort of falling out with the coach and and everything's just kind of like subsided back to normal and Mike knows that he's got to find this other coach he's got to find out some more answers and him and Meredith go on a quest to find out some more of these answers and they end up tracking down this guy uh, in a in a in another town, but he kind of lives on the outskirts of town. He's sort of like totally divorced from the rest of society and lives solo out in this cabin in the woods. But Mike ends up tracking him down and finding him, confronting this guy. Yes, he was a werewolf too. Yes, he did this same thing. But there was a turf war between him and the current coach at Mike's net new town. And they ended up sort of, he ended up getting hurt and injured and gave up the whole thing and uh, has just lived this quiet, solitary life now, just trying to get by. He doesn't want to turn anybody. He doesn't want any trouble. He just wants to live a quiet life, minding his own business. But Mike pushes him and pushes him and pushes him and pushes him. And eventually, this guy gives up, he gives in, just wants quiet, and he turns Mike. It's exactly what Mike wanted. Oh my gosh, he, he's so excited, he's like, this is it. It's a, it's a traumatic transformation, it's hard to see, feel these feelings, and like, oh, and he turns, and he, but when it's all said and done, at the end of that day or two days, he goes back to football practice, ready to hit the field. But it's worse than ever. Those werewolves can smell that he is part of another pack, that he's another werewolf's offspring. It is worse than ever. Not only is he now not ignored, but he is an act, they are actively antagonizing him, and his mere presence actively antagonizes them back. And it just heightens and heightens. And meanwhile, as this is happening, Meredith and Mike have, been, have become like a little team, like a little frickin' frack, going here, going there, figuring out these mysteries. He gets what she, he wants, she gets what she wants, and a little romance is brewing. In fact, one, at one night, they go, uh, after a, a particularly bad day at school, they go out uh, to, uh, you know, the, sort of a lover's lane, like an inspiration point, and they are harassed by these, uh, these scary sort of proto werewolfy high school-y student creatures. And basically, they, they know that these guys are sending them a message. Look, it is not okay that you know. You better not talk because look what waits you if you do. Right? And in fact, Mike and Meredith don't know if they can ever go back to town, if they can ever go back to their regular lives. They have really let the genie out of the bottle in a lot of ways. Can they go back to who they were before? Can he go even backtrack to being this sort of isolated loner, totally on the outside? Now he's on the inside, but he got what he wanted, but not in the way that he wanted it. And Meredith as well, she got answers, and now she knows too much, and she's not even safe. What are they gonna do next? Well, as they talk more and sort of figure it out more, they um, parallel to this, Mike is having more and more problems with his father. You know, his father is sort of a big guy and sort of very aggressive, and Mike is now powerful in his own way. He's become more stronger and more aggressive, and the friction between them is increasing and increasing. Mike is at possibly at his worst point now. But him and Meredith keep talking, and they figure out that, oh my gosh, Every month or so, the team does this OST, off-site training, where the coach takes all the guys out to this ranch and they do some sort of training. Again, sort of the program, the secret thing that, that, that the town is pretty much okay with because all the kids are happy and, all, and the team keeps winning. They know that this is the part where they have to go have this showdown. They can't, uh, they can't figure any other way out of it. So, so this is sort of on the horizon. But before that happens, uh, Mike and Meredith are, are out one night and one of the guys from the team, one of these werewolves from the team, uh, comes up and tries to really sort of exert himself. He is uh, clearly the weakest of this bunch 
Um, he's the lowest man on this werewolf totem pole, but he's trying to sort of make his bones, prove himself, and he ends up attacking Mike. And the two of them get in a in a in a scuffle, in a real bad fight, and they sort of are sort of part high school student, part werewolves. Everyone is trying to assert dominance, and Mike ends up killing this weakest kid. It is in self-defense. This guy has come at him, but he's killed this kid nonetheless. But he he feels that feeling of what it's like to have it, having killed and and that rush of um, that rush of that experience. And he knows, oh my gosh, this this genie's out of the bottle in, in a lot of ways. Like I don't even know um, <clears throat> how I feel about this. Like all these feelings, all this power rushing through me. I've got to get a handle on this somehow. He goes back to the werewolf that turned him and tries to get him involved, but the guy says he doesn't want to get involved. And so Mike and Meredith know that they've got to go to this offsite training to put a rest to this somehow at the end, and they do. They go to, out to this ranch that the coach takes the, takes the guys out to and lets them sort of run and exert their werewolf power. And Meredith stays sort of, stay at the car. She stays back at the car, um, but, um, Mike goes to to confront these guys, and then they are clearly outnumbering him and outpowering him, but then this other werewolf shows up. He knows. Mike has, has shown him that you can't just... Uh, you can't just stand apart and not be a part of something, not be a part of a group. You need to engage with society. You need to engage with the world. You need to engage with your high school. And the, his parallel journey of being brought in back into the fold. Now it's Mike and this guy versus the coach and this team. And there is a great battle royale. It is totally uh, insane. All these guys fighting Mike and this other guy. And then eventually the, um, the Mike's alpha kills the coach of the football team. And in doing so, he breaks the spell, sort of, and, and all of the high school football players get turned back to regular guys. So now, Mike is the only remaining werewolf. His alpha is injured, wants to go back to his regular old life, and he does, leaving Mike sort of standing alone. Now, Mike has gotten what he wanted. He wanted to be a werewolf. He wanted to have this power. But now, rather than including him, it excludes him more. These guys are still 100% against him. He is more excluded from the, the, the group than ever. The high school football team is going to start losing again. Their coach is gone. No one can talk about what it is. And Meredith as well. She's gotten what she wanted. She got all the answers that she wanted, but she can't tell either. Because it doesn't, it, it's, it's unbelievable, to say the least. So as the movie wraps up, we see, again, the high school team. They're practicing. They have a new coach. The practice lacks a certain vigor that it had before. And there, on the outside of the fence, farther out even than when he started, is Mike. He's got a bag packed. He's going to leave his dad. His dad's a grown man. He can, you know, fend for himself. But they just really haven't been getting along. And Mike's going to go off on his own. And he's going to try to find his pack, find his group that he fits in with. And, 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 and where does he belong? He sees Meredith. They have a few parting words. She's going to stay in town. She's sort of the historian of this town, and she wants to see how the history plays out. So they wave goodbye. Mike just walks off into the sunset. He's gotten what he wanted, but not in the way that he wanted. Rather than pulling him in, it's pushed him farther away. But he knows that if he keeps searching, he knows what he wants to find that group, to find those people that he fit in with, to find his pack. And that's what he's off to do. See you tomorrow for day three.